The theme of betrayal for money is as common in the GTA series as a Thanksgiving turkey in every American home. Sonny's betrayal of Tommy and also Tommy's betrayal of Sonny in GTA Vice City. Dimitri's betrayal of Nico in GTA 4, or Catalina's betrayal of Claude in GTA 3. Frankly speaking, it would be easy to list quite a lot of them, and that's actually a good thing. After all, the amount of similar situations is a dime a dozen in the criminal underworld. And since the plot of GTA 5 also takes place in the criminal world, it couldn't be different in this case. We witness betrayal in this game almost at the very beginning. Moreover, the betrayal of one of the main characters is the main theme of the storyline. Namely, we are talking about Michael's arrangement with the FIB, thanks to which he could bury his unstable, dangerous past and start a new life with his family. Of course, this came with its price, and it was quite a high one. Michael had to expose his friends, Trevor and Brad, to law enforcement. Unfortunately, Trevor became the main issue because he survived the police manhunt and years later found out the truth. Even though Trevor was furious with Michael, he did not seek revenge on him and even forgave him. And here a question may arise in some people's minds. Why? Why did Trevor, having such a bad temper, behave completely differently in this situation than everyone expected? In addition, there is also the question of whether Michael deserved to be punished at all for what he did considering the reasons he used when reaching his agreement with the FIB. This is primarily about the alleged concern for the good of his family and the safe future of his children. Today we will try to find the answer to these and many other smaller side questions surrounding this thread. By the way, I would like to thank everyone who got involved in the community post where I asked you whether Trevor should have forgiven Michael. Some of your comments really helped me in creating this video. So thanks to everyone for your engagement. To take a better look at all this, let's start from the very beginning. Trevor and Michael earned their living by doing heists, and over time, they made quite a name for themselves in the criminal underworld of the United States. Meanwhile, Brad joins the team and is recruited by Trevor. In turn, Michael meets a certain stripper, Amanda, for whom he completely loses his mind. Trevor doesn't like it very much for some reason. While the man has great sympathy for Michael's family, he also dislikes the influence this family has on his friend. Trevor begins to notice that Mike is no longer the tough and ruthless guy he once admired. To put it mildly, in Trevor's opinion, Michael has simply become a wimp. He began to pay more attention to his safety, and as a result, he lost the bravado that had impressed Trevor so much. At one point, Trevor even considered breaking up contact with Michael and continuing the business on his own, probably with Brad's assistance. From Trevor's point of view, not implementing this plan became one of the worst decisions in his life, at least at that moment. At the same time, Michael was thinking hard about a plan that would allow him to end his career as a criminal, so that he could fully devote himself to his family and take proper care of it. It was then that Agent Dave Norton appeared in Michael's life like a bolt from the blue. The man had an idea on how to make Michael's dream come true, and at the same time take a milestone in his career. The man offers Mike a new identity, and a life of prosperity for him and his family in beautiful, sunny Los Santos. In return, Michael must betray his teammate, Trevor Phillips. Even though Michael knows that it is a high price to pay, he finally agrees to this arrangement. The benefits he will receive for this betrayal completely blinds his judgment. Sometime later, the team prepares for another heist. The target is the Bobcat Security Bank in North Yankton, which also becomes the perfect location for Michael and Dave's arrangement. However, not everything goes according to plan. The bullet that was prepared to kill Trevor accidentally hits Brad, ultimately leading to the man's death. The main target is Trevor running away from the scene. In the following years, he hides out in Sandy Shores, where he deals drugs and weapons. Michael, assisted by Dave, fakes his death and starts a new life on the west coast of America. Brad is officially sent to prison, but in reality, he is buried in a grave supposedly belonging to Michael. In turn, Dave is celebrating for taking down two out of three high-ranking criminals, achieving great police success. At some point, a series of unfortunate circumstances occur that cause Trevor and Michael's paths to cross again. In short, Michael was a real mess. His wrongdoings ended with him becoming in debt to a certain influential gangster, Martin Madrazo. To repay the debt, Michael decides to contact his old friend, Lester. 
All this to organize a fruitful heist with him, the spoils of which will be used to pay off the Mexican wise guy. Even though the heist itself is great, there is one snag. Trevor learns about the incident, and thanks to the statement of one of the witnesses of the attack, he is sure that his good friend is not dead, as it was officially said. We forget a thousand things every day. How about you make sure this is one of them? Oh, oh. We forget a thousand things every day, pal. Make sure this is one of them. After some time, Trevor and his lackey Wade go to Los Santos where they successfully find Michael and his happy family. Trevor thinks that Michael faked his death for him and Brad so that he could get away from them and escape with the loot from that heist gone wrong. The truth turns out to be completely different. However, Michael does not fully lay all his cards on the table, thus further lying to Trevor. Michael tells his old friend a story about him being sent to the Witness Protection Program. This is, of course, complete nonsense. Why does Michael need Witness Protection if he has a completely new identity? Thanks to this trick, Trevor continues to live in blissful ignorance, completely unaware that Michael's plan involved his death. At this point in the storyline, all this perfectly explains why Trevor is, despite various comments, actually quite positive towards his friend, especially considering how it all looks and how disloyal Michael turned out to be. Shortly after, Michael calls Dave. The arrival of the truth-seeking Trevor could create a lot of problems for both men. Resourceful Dave plans to take advantage of this situation. He knows Michael's capabilities, so he decides to involve the FIB he works for in the dirty matters. Agent Norton is playing with fire to the point where he involves Trevor as well. Thanks to this, Trevor is supposed to be convinced that Michael's fairy tale about the Witness Protection Program is true. In turn, Michael himself sometimes has to help FIB agents in exchange for them agreeing to make a deal with him. It might seem that at times this is one big lie. In the following weeks, Trevor and Michael, accompanied by the new team, return to their profession permanently, whether by doing their heists or saving the world by working for Dave and his boss, Steve Haynes. Michael and Trevor's relationship, although sometimes very tempestuous, looks quite nice at times. Michael even promises Trevor that soon the men will fulfill their dream. Together, they will plan and execute a robbery of the Federal Reserve Bank. Soon, however, there is a great clash. Well, during one of Trevor's visits to Michael, a big argument breaks out between the two of them. The argument arose from differences in views on what men wanted their lives to look like. Trevor was quite happy that he and Michael had rebuilt the team, and they were back to operating like the old days. The problem is that Mike doesn't feel very satisfied about this particular reason. After the Federal Reserve Bank heist, Michael wants to finally end this chapter and take care of his family. In fact, we have a very similar situation here to the one that took place before the events in North Yankton. Trevor treated Michael like his best friend and loved working with him. Meanwhile, Mike once again rejects him due to his family priorities. Over time, the argument escalates to such an extent that Trevor, in a fit of anger, asks Mike a very pertinent question that has been on his mind for a long time. Namely, if he is alive, then who was buried in his place in the grave in North Yankton? Then a light bulb went on in Trevor's head. He is only a few hours away from finding out the truth. Afraid that Trevor will discover the truth, Michael goes after him, clumsily pushing him more stories to somehow stop him. The truth eventually comes out. Michael continues to try to save the situation by trying to convince Trevor that the operation in Ludendorff simply did not go as planned, and Brad was shot by accident. However, Trevor connects the dots well. He guesses that the deal between Mike and the FIB was agreed upon sometime before the North Yankton heist, and that one of the conditions of this plan was to turn him and Brad to the police. As if all this were not enough, a Chinese triad appears at the cemetery. Trevor manages to escape, but the Chinese kidnap Michael. They think that he is Trevor's lover, with whom the Asians have a hard time. It is worth mentioning that Trevor broke the deal between the Chinese and the O'Neill brothers. The Chinese had been watching him for some time while he was hanging out with Michael in his trailer in Sandy Shores, hiding from Madrazo, whose wife Trevor had kidnapped there as well. No matter, Mike is soon saved thanks to the actions of Franklin and Lester, and then returns to work for the FIB, but without Trevor. It then turns out that the government agency IAA has evidence of Dave and Haynes' corruption. The agents therefore ask Michael for this last favor, after which the main character will be free. 
However, this is not just any task. The team must break into the extremely heavily guarded FIB building and manually delete evidence from the servers. Nevertheless, the action ends in success. Michael meets with Dave at the court center shortly after. Unfortunately, the whole meeting goes to hell because suddenly all the organizations that were somehow involved in this mess show up on the spot. As a result, a huge shooting breaks out. When Michael finds himself in a lot of trouble, Trevor comes out of nowhere to the fighting area and saves him, explaining that he only helped so that Michael could fulfill his promises regarding the heist of the Federal Reserve Bank. From then until the attack, Trevor did not let Michael forget his past actions, which is hardly surprising. Cheating is still cheating, regardless of the reasons. However, Trevor's approach changes after the last mission of the story, in which the main characters of the game get rid of all their enemies. This is when Trevor and Mike's relationship undergoes major changes. The best moment showing what Trevor feels towards Michael is when the gentlemen go out, of course, after the end of the entire storyline. Then, their conversation shows that Trevor has forgiven Michael and is trying to forget what happened. Well, T? Well, what, sugar tits? Well, we got there. In the end, I mean. I mean, we moved on. Have we? I hope so. Why? Haven't we? Mm, I guess. I mean, I fucked you over, and that's why I want to apologize. And I also want to give you my share of the money we boosted in this last score. Mm, you do? Sure. I don't really need it. I want you to be happy. Wow. I don't... I don't need it either. And I don't want it. It was never about the money, Michael. I know it wasn't. It was... I was in a tough situation, and I fucked up, and I apologize. Okay. I accept your apology. Thank you. The question is, does it make sense? Despite many, even very sensible arguments that cheating is not still cheating in the end, shouldn't Trevor approach the topic in the other way? So why didn't Michael deserve Trevor's mercy? And why should Trevor turn his back on him no matter what? Well, the first reason is that no matter how we justify Michael, nothing will change the fact that he planned the death of his best friend for his own gain. You could say he just let Trevor go to hell. Yes, in the end, it did not happen. But to repeat it once again, Michael was okay with betraying Trevor in the first place. Trying to achieve your goal by any means necessary is completely immoral, something that no one should ever rely on to achieve their dreams. Of course, in the criminal world, it is often difficult to find people with an incredible morality. But the issue of not betraying other members of your family or the famous mafia term omerta are apparently very important rules. What's more, they were also very important for Trevor, who, as the events of the game showed, ignored these rules completely in the end. Besides, Michael didn't try to find another solution. Of course, all other options were very risky and probably also more difficult to implement. But the question was how much friendship was worth to Michael. First of all, Michael did not have an honest conversation with Trevor in which he would describe how things were. He didn't tell him that Agent Norton was after them. In short, Michael eliminated all other options as soon as he had the opportunity to spend the rest of his life comfortably in sunny Los Santos. All this combines very nicely with another reason, which is unfortunately a bit difficult to support because we are not able to look inside Michael's head. However, the events of GTA 5 clearly show many times that Michael never actually treated Trevor as a friend. Michael thought of Trevor more as his sidekick, or as a person who could be very helpful to him in many things. For the person who can pave the way for him to make a career in the criminal world, and then leave it for a nice retirement. Even in GTA 5, we often encounter situations in which Michael speaks to Trevor in a very dishonest and hypocritical way. The fact that Michael lied to Trevor until the very end, even when he was seconds away from discovering the truth, speaks for itself. Additionally, in conversations with other people, Michael always presents Trevor in an unfavorable light. A good example is Mike's conversation with Franklin in the Dead Man Walking mission. I ever tell you about Trevor? Hmm? Uh, man, I, I think so, shit. Well, if you only think so, then I wasn't being completely honest. He's, I don't, hell walking on Earth. That's what he is. Well, let's bury this motherfucker. Oh, yeah, good luck with that. Shit. I mean, Trevor and I got history. Complicated. Fucking history. Look, 
I've done a lot of things that I ain't proud of. Okay, I never claimed to be an angel. But you meet Trevor Franklin, you'll swear I am an angel. As it was said earlier, Michael tended to treat people in terms of how much profit he could make from them. This is clearly demonstrated by the situation with Devin Weston. One day, when Michael meets Devin in person, he makes Michael an offer. He wants Michael and his friends to get him some valuable cars. Michael is not very enthusiastic about this kind of cooperation at first, and this is not really surprising. Weston quickly shows that he is just a rich asshole, and dealing with him may backfire. However, when it turns out that Devin is able to make Michael's big dreams come true, the man immediately changes his mindset. Furthermore, super happy Michael immediately calls Franklin to get him on the job. He also sells him a fairy tale that this is a great opportunity for him to gain reputation and money. And so saying BS to Franklin ends up with the young gangster risking his own life to get toys for Weston and not receiving a single cent for all this work in the end. Moving on, another thing that nicely shows the contrast between how Trevor treated Mike and vice versa is the two different endings to the game. Let me explain it. If Franklin chooses ending B, the one that results in Michael's death, Franklin will call Trevor asking for help. Trevor's response is quite predictable. Even though Michael himself once wanted him dead and treated him like a fool, he calls Franklin a traitor and has no intention of helping him. Hey T man, I'm in trouble dawg. I think I gotta take out Michael. Got to? Yeah, man, look. The FIB, man, they trying to get me to clap you. And Devin Weston, he trying to get me to ice Michael. And I thought if I... If I do that, man, maybe we got some room, you know? So, wh what are you telling me this for? Cuz, dog, I'm doing this for us. I thought you could... Well, I can't! You're turning on him? I have had enough traitors in my life! Man, your ass could say thank you. Shit. You deserve each other. However, when Franklin decides to kill Trevor and calls Michael for help, he does not seem to say no whatsoever. Mike, man, I need to have a conversation with Trevor. You know, yeah, that conversation. Oh, shit. All right, okay. Look, man, the FIB dudes want him gone. And Devin Weston want y'all gone. You know how it is, dawg. Shit. Somebody gotta go. Well, it ain't fucking me. Exactly, man. If that wasn't enough, at the very end of the mission, if Franklin doesn't shoot Trevor for a long enough time, Michael will do it for him instead. Fuck, kid. <laughs> Moreover, after the death of his friend, Michael will not spare himself from giving a farewell speech about what a devil Trevor was. A little later, we once again have clear confirmation that Michael does not deserve friendship. He mentions that what matters most in life is survival. Yes, he is partly right here. However, the situations Michael found himself in showed us that he is not a person who seeks compromise. This is not a person who will look at situations from the angle of other people involved. As long as he sees potential and benefits for himself in a certain solution, no matter how many people would be harmed, Michael will implement this plan anyway. All this shows that Michael does not regret what he did 10 years ago, and that if necessary, he would do it again. If we compare this with what he says to Trevor after ending C, that he is sorry and that he made a mistake, then we will notice a big divergence between these words and what we agreed earlier. However, the entire plot shows something completely different. The words we hear in ending C are the result of Michael's life finally turning out the way he wanted it to. Michael has his dream job with Solomon Richards. His family is at home with him. In addition, the relationship with Amanda seems to be savable. So to sum it up, it's all the good things that happen at the ending that make Michael completely change his mindset. He doesn't feel like arguing with the unpredictable Trevor, so it's better to beat his chest and admit his mistake than to forcefully justify this terrible decision from nine years ago. Once again, he was two-faced and only focused on getting benefits. At the very end, it is also worth adding that as a result of Michael's brilliant plan, Brad died, who, in theory, meant a lot to Trevor. After all, there is a reason why Trevor constantly mentioned Brad during the storyline of GTA V. Looking at this issue from the sidelines and knowing the principles that Trevor followed, this topic is very puzzling. 
One wonders why Trevor resigned from avenging Brad. The explanation here comes from certain conversations between Trevor and Franklin and Trevor and Michael, which show that Trevor simply didn't like Brad. Trevor says that Brad was just an asshole. He also claims that sooner or later he would kill Brad by himself. Not in the same way as Michael, of course, but still. If I'm completely honest with you, Brad was a bit of a dick. The dude who got killed? Yeah, I mean, would I have done it one day? Maybe, probably, but probably like. Therefore, the real reason why Trevor was furious with Mike was because of the way he had handled the matter of ending his criminal career. So it was about certain rules, and not about Trevor particularly liking Brad. As you can see, Michael was very lucky that Trevor did not come to him after arriving in Los Santos with a gun in his hand to take revenge for all this. The best thing is that, as we'll hear in a moment, it was probably because Trevor never really thought it through. Overall, Trevor seems very lost in all this. The dissonance that appears in his head is enormous. Trevor, because he thought of Michael as his brother, probably never really analyzed who Michael was. It can be said that Trevor perceives Michael by how he created him in his head, and not by who Michael actually is. It's a bit like when in a relationship, one person loves the other because of how he thinks of that person, and not for who that person is in reality. Who knows, maybe it also connects well with Trevor's relationship with his mother, who always blamed him for everything. Perhaps this translated into the relationship with Michael, who was like a brother to Trevor. Just like in his relationship with his mother and with Michael, Trevor was that repressed child who was always blamed when something bad happened. But all this is more of a loose opinion. Let me know if you think Trevor did the right thing by forgiving Michael, or maybe he should cut off all ties with this guy. In the meantime, I'm saying goodbye to you. Take care and see you soon.